<laughs> Hi guys, I can I can't hear you, but I uh, I understand that you might wave if you can hear me. We are now waving. Yeah. Okay, good. Uh, can I make a small comment about the last uh, caller? And and by the way, it's a great uh, honor to be talking to both of you. I watch your show all the time. Don't say that. Uh, a lot Just of talk. people don't know that men's and women's brains developed differently. Uh, it's, uh, in fact, if I understand if you know brain physiology, you can look at a brain and tell whether it came from a man or a woman. Not uh, true. But in, in fact, that uh, difference doesn't depend on their genes. I see a flaw uh, in this plan of like just letting people not. talk without getting interrupted. But, oh, can you hear me? I uh, can hear you. Okay, okay. good. Jen, you were about to say that that is patently untrue. Nope, not true. There's no statistically significant difference between male and female brains. Uh, okay, but um, this is from Janet Norden, who's a professor of Vanderbilt University, understanding the brain. And you're, you're right in that sense. Well, what I'm trying to say is that there are... Uh, <sighs> These differences aren't specifically men and women. I probably explained it incorrectly. But uh, okay. there are, in fact, differences in brains. And it would be possible for uh, a, 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 an actual physical difference uh, in a brain to be present. And as the last caller said, it's just in their head. It may not be a visible difference, but those differences could, in fact, exist. OK. OK. Well, the real thing I would like to talk to you about today is um, the idea that we should frame the discussion about theism and about atheism, and it's important to do so. George Lakoff uh, says, you know, framing the discussion is an important part about winning the debate. And a lot of people will often say, I lost my religion, uh, or I'm afraid of losing my religion. And uh, I think we need to somehow frame this discussion in a more positive way. I think that uh, my experience with theism was that uh, there are a lot of people with doubts, uh, and they in there for a long time because they're going to lose something. Mm -hmm. And I would say when I came around, thanks to you know help of your show and some of the others, to actually admitting uh, that I don't believe in a God uh, and standing up for that position, I found it liberating. And, and uh, I, I think somehow we need to say I, I didn't lose something when I took this step. Something I gained a lot of confidence in myself. I gained a lot of freedom. Uh, and somehow we should be saying that, you know, I, I got beyond uh, religion or I got, uh, I, I, something in that way. So, uh, yeah, that's the essence of to your comments I, on. I, I uh, see what you're saying. We can and I, this in a yeah, I see what you're saying, and I believe, I mean, you know, I understand the validity of framing, but I'm not necessarily sure that losing something, you know, that defining something in a negative way is necessarily a bad thing. Like, for instance, uh, a cancer survivor might say, hey, I beat cancer. They're not saying I gained not cancer. <laughs> uh, they, they are uh, saying that they got rid of something which was harmful. Right. And you can frame that in a positive way without trying to come up with a special word of something you now have that you didn't have before. Yeah, and, and uh, I think that, I mean, most of us on this show have talked over and over again about how, um, and, and we've talked to so many people out there about how liberating it is to not, you know, have to rely on faith anymore for, you know, to inform your worldview or your decisions about things. Um, and in that sense, losing faith is like losing the baggage that went along with believing in something that um, you didn't really have a good justification for. So I, I don't think it's necessarily a negative thing, like what Russell was saying. You know, um, and, and in fact, it may be a very positive thing to lose that baggage. Um, I, I see your point. Um, I, I, mean, I see religion in many ways sort of like, uh, and when people their addiction to heroin. They don't say, I lost my addiction to heroin. Of course, they did. But mm -hmm. they, they say, I got better. Uh, yeah. Uh, for example, mm -hmm. you know, for example, the uh, Recovering for Religion Foundation, I think, is appropriately named. Yeah. Uh, so I'd like okay. to reinforce something like that. Uh, yeah. 
I love the name recovering from religion. Yeah, I, I do people too. People should refer to it a lot. <laughs> and and just a, just a word on faith. I mean, when theists talk about losing the losing their faith or someone losing their faith, um, there's this um, implicit view that faith is something um, that's good and that it's somehow a virtue, and they actually elevate it to a virtue. This whole belief without evidence and oh, you just got to have faith and you know, you got through something because your faith was really strong or whatever. Mm -hmm. They talk on and on about what a virtue faith is. And one of the things that happens when you, when you um, basically stop believing in a God is that you realize what a vacuous concept that is, <laughs> this faith. It's not a virtue. It's not something good. Yeah, it's not only not a virtue, but it can actually be actively harmful because it treats... Yeah. Um, you jumping to conclusions uh, without, uh, you know, without caring for the truth right. as a net positive. And part of the reason that we talk about getting rid of something is that we are actively fighting against uh, a harmful cultural phenomenon, which is going to be there whether we acknowledge it or not. Right. So, yeah, I mean, I agree that we definitely gain something, you know, when we stop believing in things that, that have no evidence to, to substantiate them. But also, losing the faith is not a negative thing. Um, yeah. that, that's always a positive in my view. Okay. Uh, we, I, we'd, I'd be happy to have more discussion about this normally, but uh, we need to move on to the last caller and go eat at Threadgills. Yes. Uh, so thanks for calling, Keith. <laughs> 